Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Free Tours by Foot London. Uh, firstly, introductions. My name is Sinead, and I'm going to be taking you on a journey today of the city of Westminster. Now, naturally, you can't join us in person at the moment. It's been a horrendous year for everyone. So we're looking for new innovative ways to do the tours. So you sit back in your living room, have a nice cup of tea, and join me on a very small tour of the city of Westminster. Now, ladies and gents, this is a highlight tour. Obviously, when you are able to join us again in person, we'll be able to bring you in much more detail to all these major sites. But today, to give you an example of what we're going to do, we're going to head in to the governing political and the spiritual heart of London, Westminster. The city of Westminster, 1,000 years old. Now, this is the big hitter. So today, we're going to start with Buckingham Palace, St. James's Palace, Clarence House, St. James's Park. Then we're going to head into the government area and the political area. We're going to head into Parliament Square, the House of Lords, the House of Commons, Palace of Westminster, Westminster Abbey. Finally, I want to take you up the corridor of power known as Whitehall. And that will take us through to Downing Street, Horse Guards Parade. And we'll finish our tour today at Trafalgar Square. So sit back, relax, enjoy the journey. A beautiful day here in London. And as you can see, an amazing view directly behind me of the London Home and Office of Her Majesty the Queen, ladies and gentlemen, Buckingham Palace. Now, Buckingham Palace, the Queen refers to as the office. Windsor Castle, actually, is the country cottage. But it was built in 1702 by the Duke of Buckingham. Now, his name was John Sheffield. So it started out as Buckingham House. And the first royal family member to acquire the property of Buckingham House was King George III of England, who some of you will be familiar with, the famous last king of the Americas, who famously lost the colonies to the Americas. Now, it was his son, King George IV, upon ascension to the throne, inherited Buckingham House, and he employed master architect John Nash to develop Buckingham House into the magnificent Buckingham Palace. But the first royal monarch to officially take up residence in Buckingham Palace was, in fact, a very young girl who at the tender age of 18, while sharing a bedroom with her mother at the time in Kensington Palace, a rather overbearing mother, might I add, well, she was awoken one morning in the early hours of the morning to be told she was now queen of the largest empire the world had ever seen. And that, of course, was Queen Victoria. And she did naturally what any other 18-year-old girl would do, packed her bags immediately, waved goodbye to her overbearing mother, and moved on into a brand new 775 room mansion. Queen Victoria was also the first royal family member to use the balcony you see there for a public engagement, right in the center by the Colliers. And she did so to showcase and advertise her husband's brainchild, the Great Industrial Exhibition of 1851. Now you'll notice I came up some steps here, folks. This is the Victoria Memorial. And if you just follow me, I wanna show you the statue here of Queen Victoria. Now, Queen Victoria, a mild obsession of mine, of course, she reigned from 1837 to 1901. 63 years, seven months, and two days on the throne. Now, I'm sure you're all aware that she held the title of longest reigning British monarch up until the 9th of September, 2015, when on that date, she was surpassed by the present queen, who has now become the longest reigning British monarch since 1066. And I think we'll all agree, that's a pretty remarkable achievement. Prince Charles also passed a historic milestone a couple of years ago, ladies and gents. He officially became the longest waiting heir to the throne in history. Bless it. Now, of course, our next stop today will be Prince Charles's house at Clarence House. Now, we know I have done a little bit of extra research this morning that Prince Charles will shortly be leaving Clarence House, heading to Westminster Abbey for a commemoration service. So I want to try and bring you down there and see if there's any chance we'll get a glimpse of Prince Charles. But as we're doing it, just to let you know that in, at Free Tours by Foot and the City of Westminster, this is quite possibly one of the best places to see the changing of the guard ceremony. Now, the changing of the guard ceremony, a massive tourist attraction, has been suspended presently because of coronavirus, but it will be back. 
The changing of the guard is the changing over the regiments of the foot soldiers of Her Majesty the Queen. Now there are five regiments of the Queen's soldiers. The Scots, the Welsh, the Irish, the Coldstream Guards and the Grenadiers. Now they may look like toy soldiers to you with their Canadian bearskins, but do not underestimate these men folks because they have all served active tours of duty in war zones all over the world. They are what is known as the last line of defense for Her Majesty the Queen. Now basically what that means is, if any situation arose, the police would automatically intervene, attempt to defuse that situation by making arrests. But if necessary, these men will shoot to protect the Queen. That is after all their job, a highly coveted position, and one they are hand chosen for, and it's a great honor for them to do so. Now the guard change usually takes place Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Of course, in the summer months, it's every single day. An amazing tradition that's here since Victorian times. Now, we're going to take a little crossover here, ladies and gents. And just bear with us around here. So, in a 48-hour shift, the guards are on duty for 48 hours. Now, that doesn't mean they're standing in their sentry boxes outside the palace or the royal palaces for 48 hours. In a 48-hour shift, they do two hours on, six hours off. Two hours on, six hours off. A 24-hour shift, it's two hours on, four hours off. Now, the guard change, a wonderful tradition here. Now, please join us here at Free Tours by Foot because through experience of working this area, we know exactly where the soldiers will be and exactly what time they will start to march. They usually start to march from St. James's Palace and the regiment that's going off duty will head up. Now, we have somebody on the way here, ladies and gents. Let's have a quick look. Now, these are the things that you need to join us for. These royal sightings usually. It's usually a royal family member here. Now, I can't imagine we'll see too many, but that's definitely royal family, folks. Now, I don't expect we've missed Charles yet, though, because Prince Charles will be leaving from Clarence House. And Clarence House is the home of Prince Charles and his wife, Camilla. Now, Clarence House, beautiful residence. The Queen Mother herself lived there for a period of time. The Queen's actual mother. Uh, it's protected as well by the guards down here, but we usually have a few royal sightings down here. Um, in just a moment, we're going to head there and fingers crossed, we will see the future King of Great Britain heading out to Westminster Abbey. Oh my God, how amazing was that, ladies and gents? I even managed to get a wave. Now, I know he was waving at me because it was just me and Aaron standing here. And this is the excitement of London. You never know what's going to happen. And it's always exciting to see a member of the royal family. You don't have to be a royalist or a fan of the monarchy for that. But this is Clarence House, ladies and gents, the White House behind me here. That is the home of Prince Charles and his wife, Camilla, the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall. Now, right beside of it, some of you may be familiar this house is called Lancaster House. Now, Lancaster House, a beautiful home as well, um, usually is where any Crown documentaries, or the Crown, for example, or the King's Speech, any royal films or documentaries are filmed. They are not allowed to film inside Buckingham Palace, so they use the inside of Lancaster House. Now, we all are, of course, big fans of the Crown. Based on uh, fiction, uh, essentially, so they say, but what we're going to do is right now, though, I want to take you up to another very famous palace. We're going to make our way towards St. James's Palace. 
Now, lesser known palace, but no less important. Uh, the official palace of the royal family, ladies and gents. The house, in fact, of the royal family. Uh, Buckingham Palace itself is only in the court of St. James's Palace. And it was built by Henry VIII for his second wife, Anne Boleyn. Now, she famously never saw it in its completion, however, because you figure we all know why, because she had her head chopped off in the Tower of London. Now, just remember, ladies and gents, this is an interactive tour. We're more than happy for you to ask questions in the comments, so please like and subscribe. You will be given updates, of course, then in all our videos in London, and I have already made a city of London tour. Uh, it's a two um, hour tour usually, but you'll see that video is also on our YouTube channel. Any questions you have, please don't hesitate to ask or any comments you have, please do so in the comment section. Now it's been a tough year for guides, as you can all imagine. We love to guide and we love when you are here with us. Um, if you would like to join us, of course, which you will be in the summer and of course, hopefully in March 2021, free tours by foot is the website London. Now we are international, so in several different countries, please have a look at our website to see what tours are on offer. Um, also, ladies and gentlemen, we're including a little PayPal link there. If you do like to tip your guide today, I'll be more than happy to accept a cup of coffee off you. A uh, cup of coffee, it doesn't make a difference how many, I drink copious amounts of caffeine. So we're just coming up here on St. James's Palace. Now, St. James's Palace is also quite significant. Well, it will be in the next few years. This is also where the death of a monarch is announced. Usually on the balcony here, a gentleman will come out and announce the death of a monarch. Now, naturally, we don't expect it. There's longevity in the genes, and it certainly won't be happening for a very long time. But when it does occur, it's a pretty ceremonious occasion. Um, this particular, the Queen's death, the actual password for when she dies, or the passcode as they refer to it, is London Bridge has fallen. But a gentleman will come out on the balcony here and announce, the Queen is dead, long live the King. Or the King is dead, long live the Queen. Um, as it's usually been during that period. Now this is the famous St. James's Palace and this is the Friary Court. So when you are on the tour with us, ladies and gents, this is where the soldiers assemble before they march for the changing of the guard. They head past through here and head up to the palace. And then the new relief will arrive from Wellington Barracks. So also an incredible spot. But again, when you join us, we will make sure you get the best visuals. Now this palace was also the home to Prince Charles, Prince William and Prince Harry up until 2003. It's also where King Charles I of England, the only British king in history to be publicly executed, spent his very last night. Just to give you a quick idea as well, across the road here is the chapel of St. James's Royal. It's behind this wall. Now, regretfully not open to the public. I do believe that maybe once a month every year you can visit, but that's not entirely relevant. That is where Queen Victoria married her beloved Prince Albert. And it's also where Princess Diana was laid in state before her very public funeral in Westminster Abbey. Westminster Abbey is, of course, coming up later on on the tour. Now, for right now, I want to take you through what is St. James's Park. Now, this is one of eight royal parks. Absolutely stunning inside here, folks. And all the animals in here are property of the crown. So you will get a little feel of it. And the great thing about St. James's Park, and for me personally, the great thing about London, you're in one of the busiest metropolises in the world, in the middle of the hustle and bustle and the mania of the city of London, but you're only ever always 10 minutes walking distance from a beautiful open green space where you can get away from it all and quite literally feel like you're in the British countryside in central London. Now on the tour, ladies and gents, we will be heading through here and that will take us down towards the cabinet war rooms of Winston Churchill. Then we'll be heading into Parliament Square see the iconic buildings of Big Ben, the Palace of Westminster, Westminster Abbey, and then we'll be heading up the corridor of power and finishing up at Trafalgar. I just need to reiterate to you, of course, this is a highlight tour. It's only a percentage of the information we will be getting on the actual tour when you do join us. Now, 
stunning view of the palace there in the background, ladies and gents. OK, folks, so we're going to take a lovely little stroll now through the park, and I just want you to have a look around. Erin, uh, my wonderful cameraman who's assisting me today, will be giving you some amazing shots of the park. Now, there are 57 acres of park right in the heart here of Westminster, just adjacent to the Mall. Now, the Mall, by the way, is the red brick road that leads all the way up to Buckingham Palace from Trafalgar Square. The red brick road was built to resemble a red carpet. Now, also living in the park here for over 400 years are the pelicans. They were actually a gift from the Russian ambassador to King Charles II, who was known as the Merry Monarch, one of my favorite kings of Britain. Uh, the son of the executed king, King Charles I of England. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna have a little walk over the, br the bridge here, a very popular spot for tourists. Amazing views over the bridge here. On one side, you will see Buckingham Palace between the trees. And of course, on the other side, you will see Horse Guards Parade. And we will be visiting Horse Guards Parade today, which is where the Horse Guards of Her Majesty the Queen are stationed. So enjoy the views. We're gonna head through here. We know that this is one of the Queen's favorite parks and she's often been known to take a little stroll through the park. So you will notice, ladies and gents, when you're coming through the park, that the animals are quite tame. They've become quite accustomed to visitors in the park. Now, you are not encouraged to feed the animals, but I usually bring a little bit of apple for the squirrels. So let's just see if we can tempt one or two of the squirrels with a little bit of apple. Not usually a problem. They tend to eat right out of your hand at this time of the year when food is scarce. It's okay. <laughs> Some pigeons as well. Now we're taking a little route down here now next. We're going to head into Parliament Square, which is the governing and political side of London. It is home, of course, to the Palace of Westminster, Westminster Abbey, the House of Lords, the House of Commons, the Victoria Tower, the iconic Big Ben, and statues of world leaders adorn Parliament Square. Now, one of the more famous statues there, I'll show you shortly, is the statue of Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill is arguably one of the most famous British Prime Ministers in, in London's history. But did you know he could also be one of the wittiest? He had a way with words and he had always had a sharp response for everyone, particularly a witty retort. But one lady learned the hard way. And that lady was a lady called Lady Nancy Astor. Now, she was the first woman to take her seat in the Houses of Parliament. Pretty big deal at the time for a female MP. So Nancy Astor and Churchill were friends, but they tended to, uh, well, bang heads occasionally, let's say. And this particular morning was no exception. She was furious with Churchill. They had a slight argument. It escalated. So she stood up. Now, picture the scenario in a room full of... 200 male MPs and she stood up and she said Winston Churchill sir if you were my husband I would poison you with cyanide to which Winston Churchill immediately replied Lady Nancy Astor if you were my wife I would gladly drink it 
Always a smart remark from Winston Churchill. So we're heading down towards what is called the Cabinet War Rooms of Winston Churchill. Now, a very popular attraction. Gary Ullman won the Oscar for playing Ch uh, Churchill in that incredible movie, Darkest Hour. And the popularity surged again, yet again after that. Personally, I think John Lithgow's um, Winston Churchill and the Crown was exceptional. But these are the underground offices, bunkers and offices from where Churchill commanded and coordinated the troops from during World War II. An incredible interactive display. And I would recommend, ladies and gents, if you are coming to visit us next summer, I would start booking your tickets for the Churchill War Room now. It wouldn't be uncommon to see literally thousands of people queuing to get into the war rooms, particularly when we know the demand will be very big this summer of 2021. And we are super excited about welcoming you all back. So right across the road here are the Churchill War Rooms, and I'll be showing you that next. So as you can see, ladies and gents, we're approaching the Cabinet War Rooms are right here. A little tucked away and hidden at the back of Whitehall, uh, but very easy to find. And we will be showing you where anything you need, um, anywhere you need to go in London as well on the tours. But the, here is the Churchill War Rooms. And Churchill himself actually stood on the roof of that very building watching bombs. This is the Treasury, by, by the way, the offices of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, or the Minister for Finance. His home, incidentally, is number 11 Downing Street. Rishi Shunak lives next door to the present, the current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Uh, he stood on the roof of that very building and he watched bombs raining down in London during the Blitz. He was heard screaming and shouting, whatever you save, save St. Paul's Cathedral. And so they did, uh, barely, barely any damage. More on St. Paul's in the City of London tour, which you can also see on YouTube on our free Tours by Foot London website. Speaking of World War II, if you were particularly interested in that era in London and the extensive damage that was here, one of my colleagues, Canis, does an incredible tour on World War II as well, all available and coming to you from summer 2021. But for right now, we're going to take a little stroll around Parliament Square. I want to see some of the big hitters, some of the biggest attractions in London. Big Ben is under extensive renovation at the moment, folks. It happens every 60 years or so. He needs a little bit of plastic surgery, let's say. So Big Ben isn't very visible at the moment, and it is quite disappointing to people when they arrive. But of course, when he does come back, he'll come back in all his glory. They are replacing all the clock faces of Big Ben. But our next stop today is Westminster Abbey. The Minster in the West. Minster is the former name for an abbey. So the West Minster in the West of London. Just bear with us, folks. King William the Conqueror of England. I think we're okay. Rode his horse up the aisle of Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day, 1066. On that day, he declared himself King of England. Ever since, every king and queen in British history, with the exception of only two, have all been crowned inside in the incredible Westminster Abbey. Attached to Westminster Abbey is one of the most prestigious public schools in this country. It's called Westminster School. Now, to confuse you further, public in this country is private. The state schools are the public schools. So state and public is public and private. Confused yet? I certainly am. Works completely different in Ireland, where I'm from. However, very, very prestigious alumni in the former Westminster School, in the form of A.A. A. Milne, the author of Winnie the Pooh, Sir Christopher Wren, the architect, uh, widely regarded to be the Leonardo da Vinci of London, building 51 churches here in London, particularly in the city. Again, you'll see more on that in our City of London tour. And also Dido, the famous American female singer, when they took in girls into the school. Now, traditionally it was a boarding school, but they now um, accept day release pupils as well. Um, rather bizarre for any of my Irish viewers, Shane McGowan, the lead singer of the Pogues, also attended. That was a scholarship. Regretfully, Shane didn't last very long. It's a bit of a wild reputation 
six months before he was expelled. Very surprised he lasted that length of time. So Westminster School is the first view you'll see here. Now the sun is slightly in our way. Please forgive us, we'll just head a little bit closer to Westminster. Here's the school and of course the Abbey. Okay, so there's been a site of Christian worship on this site for over 1,000 years. As previously mentioned, King William the Conqueror of England, he rode his horse up the Isle of Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day, 1066. On that day, he declared himself King of England. And ever since, every king and queen in British history, with the exception of only two, have all been crowned inside in Westminster Abbey including Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. She became queen in 1952, but a year later was when she was crowned here in Westminster Abbey. Lady Diana's very somber funeral took place in here. Thousands of people lined the streets mourning the death of Lady Diana. Uh, Kate married William in here. Um, that morning, we all stood here with bated breath, waiting for the ex her to come out of the incredible Bentley and to see that magnificent Alexander McQueen creation by Sarah Burton, Mary Queen of Scots, Queen Elizabeth I, Newton, Purcell, Darwin, Dickens, Chaucer, Henry Hardy, Pitt the Elder, Pitt the Younger, Browning, Tennyson, to mention only a few of over 3,000 of the most influential people all buried inside in Westminster Abbey. An incredible place to visit when you do arrive and tickets will be available here at the Abbey itself. Now obviously very quiet at the moment, which is good for you guys because you get to see London in all its splendour without the crowds of people. But again when you're with us on Free Tours by Foot London here on our Westminster tour we will be able to give you the best times to visit the Abbey and the best ways to get your tickets. Again, another lesser known church in the area. Apologies, just waiting for a little bit of the traffic to pass is St. Margaret's Church. Now, lesser known church, but again, no less important. St. Margaret's Church is the Church of Parliament Square and the Politicians Church. And Lord, don't they need prayers, ladies and gents. In this very church is where Winston Churchill married his beloved Clementine in here. Samuel Pepys was married here. So Walter Raleigh is buried in sight in that very building, as is William Caxton, the inventor, of course, of the printing press. Beautiful little church, free of charge, and lovely to have a little wander inside. You are welcome to attend to any of the church services in this country, by the way. Um, there is one particular service that is of amazing interest to everybody, and that is called Even Song. And it takes place here at Westminster Abbey, but also in St. Paul's Cathedral. And the St. Paul's Choir and Westminster Boys Choir do perform. So it's about a 45 minute prayer service. There usually is a little queue for it, but it's incredible. To experience the uh, Abbey in all its glory and the beautiful voices of the choir. Now, I want to try to give you the best views here of the Houses of Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, we just head down here. I want to show you the Victoria Tower. Now, this is the tallest square Gothic building in Europe. Home, actually, to all the parliamentary records dating all the way back to the Magna Carta. Now, the Victoria Tower was named after Queen Victoria in her Diamond Jubilee, 60 years on the throne. We had one other queen who reached, of course, the Diamond Jubilee, and that's the present queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. King George III came close, but bless him, uh, he um, acquired the rather unfortunate nickname of Mad King George III of England. He suffered from a liver disease called Protheria. 
It eventually affected his brain and he became so mentally incapacitated he couldn't perform his duties as king. So the reign went over to the Prince Regent, was his son, and he took over in everything but name. But anyway, I'm sidetracking a little bit. The Victoria Tower is home to the exclusive entrance of the Queen. You'll see the arched entrance there. And she'll enter through once a year. And she'll come dressed in the crown jewels and she'll come to officially open the Houses of Parliament. These are the House of Lords and the House of Commons, the governing body here in Great Britain. Now the building, ladies and gents, is 158 years old or so, uh, 1843. Not the original building. The first Houses of Parliament burnt to the ground in a destructive fire. So this was rebuilt, it was known as the Palace of Westminster in 1843. And the building was Augustus Pugin and Charles Barry. Augustus Pugin is set up with so much of his headspace and life's work into the rebuilding of the palace, he himself ended up going absolutely mad, completely and utterly insane. But one part of the building did survive, and this, ladies and gents, is Westminster Hall, the oldest part of the Palace of Westminster. In that very building is where King Charles I of England, the only British king in history to be publicly executed by that man, Oliver Cromwell, was condemned to death by Oliver Cromwell inside in that very building. In that very building is where Guy Fawkes of the Gunpowder Plot assassination attempt was also condemned to death in that building. In that very building, ladies and gentlemen, William Wallace of Braveheart fame was also condemned to death inside in that very building. Incredible history centuries and centuries and centuries of history in one immediate area. Now, under construction, of course, is Big Ben. Now, a lot of people tend to confuse this. Big Ben is not the actual clock tower. Big Ben is the bell inside the clock tower, the 13 and a half ton bell. Now, Big Ben, we believe, gets his name, named after either two men. There's a bit of a dispute as to which one. One of them was Benjamin Hall, and he would have been the Commissioner of Public Works during the rebuilding of the palace in 1843. But Londoners tend to think it's named after a chap called Benjamin Kant. And Benjamin Kant was a prize-winning bare-knuckle boxing champion. Very strong, tall, iconic man. Again, resembling what is, of course, Big Ben. Regretfully, under massive construction, but. When she does come back, she will be absolutely stunning. Palace of Westminster, ladies and gentlemen. And now, here's Parliament Square. Let's have a little walk around and I'll show you some of the statues of Parliament Square. So, just a little walk around here. You'll see presidents and prime ministers from all over the world. Of course, you have Nelson Mandela. Robert Peel is next. Obviously, the... Uh, founder of the Metropolitan Police Force here in London. Take a little look right at the back there for my American friends. There's Abraham Lincoln. Here we have Mahatma Gandhi, my friends from India. This is a statue, in fact, of Benjamin Disraeli. And of course, my favorite and the newest arrival to Parliament Square, here's Millicent Fawcett. Edward Smith Stanley. Another one here of Henry John Temple, or the Viscount Palmerston. Statue of Jan Christian Smuts. David Lloyd George coming up, also known as the Welsh Wizard. And of course, the crowning glory, pride of place, absolutely opposite Big Ben, is Winston Churchill. So as you can see, this incredible statue in Parliament Square, uh, he did object slightly to having it in the square. He wasn't entirely happy about it being erected. He wasn't subject to that adoration. However, he did eventually agree, provided he could have his statue facing his favorite pub. And if you take a little look across the road, but behind where those four gentlemen are in grey shirts, there's a beautiful light fixture. This is St. Stephen's Tavern. 
and it's a beautiful pub right here in Parliament Square. So it wouldn't be uncommon to run into a couple of MPs in there. Inside that pub as well has a division bell. So if there is a vote cast to be cast in Parliament, the MPs, if they are having a little tipple in there, have a certain amount of time after that bell rings to return to Parliament and cast their vote. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next little stroll will be up the corridor of power. This is Whitehall, home to the Cenotaph, 10 Downing Street, Horse Guards Parade, the Cabinet Office, the Welsh Office, the Scottish Office, Banqueting House, incredible area. There are more CCTV cameras in London than there are in any other city. And I'm pretty sure the majority of them are on this very street. Let's head up the corridor of power, otherwise known as Whitehall. It's very difficult to walk anywhere in London without coming across some form of war memorial to commemorate Britain's war dead. And this one is the most important British war memorial in the world. And it's dedicated to every fallen soldier from any British conflict. This is the Cenotaph. And this is where Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II herself, alongside members of the royal family, uh, members of parliament, the prime minister and the opposition leader, uh, hundreds of army veterans will all come here on Remembrance Day to commemorate Britain's war dead. Now, designed, of course, by Edwin Lutyens, a name you will hear again very shortly, also responsible for the fountains of Trafalgar Square. So a very sombre salute to all of Britain's war dead from any conflict, from any war at any time. So the wreaths of poppies are laid here every year. This is the Cenotaph. So right beside the Cenotaph is the Ministry of Defence building. And this is the building, of course, the Ministry of Defence, are responsible for this country's security. Uh, Rumoured to be taller underground than it actually is above ground. Um, top secret Ministry of Defence laboratories actually uh, underground. Not that we know too much about these, but there is a rumour between guides in London that there is a very sophisticated underground road network in London, which connects major buildings like the Ministry of Defence, our next stop in just a moment, 10 Downing Street, Buckingham Palace, and the Grand Old Duke of York statue on the map. They say that they could successfully get the Queen if there was any major crisis or event occurred in London. It's said they could successfully get the Queen and the Prime Minister out underground without even coming above ground. Now, as I mentioned the CCTV cameras, I'm pretty sure the majority of those are on the Ministry of Defence building. So always remember when you're in London, you're taking pictures of them, taking pictures of you. Now let's head across the road and behind these black railing gates is of course the home of the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. This is number 10 Downing Street. Now, number 10 Downing Street obviously is very, very secure. There was an incident, if you were here in the early 80s in London, you could have very quickly gone up to the door of number 10, taken your little selfie, and off you go. But there was an incident in the 1980s where there was a, an attempt on the life of one of the British Prime Ministers. After that, it became a lot more secure. So when you are having a look here in a moment, when we're passing Downing Street, it's right up the back and it's the blue building where the Prime Minister will address the country. Now, it's been the official home of Prime Ministers since 1730. The very first Prime Minister to take up residence here uh, was Robert Walpole. And as previously mentioned, number 11 is home to the Minister for Finance, or the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And his name, of course, is Rishi Sunak. And I think we all appreciate the fact that it's been a very, very busy year for the British Prime Minister. A lot of controversy, of course, with the whole Brexit debate and, of course, coronavirus. So it's ongoing. Um, I happened to be down here myself yesterday, so it's quite uh, easy to see him. He tends to fly 
over and back in the car between here, but a very short distance to Parliament Square, where Prime Minister's questions take place every Wednesday. You can, of course, get tickets to visit inside the Palace of Westminster. And that's something I would highly recommend you to do whilst you're in London. It's incredible to see the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Now, of course, many, many other um, governmental buildings along the way. Here's the Cabinet Office. You regularly see the press outside here. But we're heading up towards Horse Guards Parade. And this, this is the former ceremonial entrance of the Royal Domain. Horse Guards Par Parade is, correct, is protected by the Horse Guards of the Queen. Now, you have two regiments of the Queen's Horse Guards. You have the Blues and Royals and the Life Guards. Famous past Blues and Royals, for example, would have been Prince William and Prince Harry. Prince Harry, Harry actually served time in Afghanistan with the Blues and Royals. Uh, the commanding chief officer of the Blues and Royals, in fact, is the Princess Royal, Princess Anne. Um, one of the more famous lifeguards of the Queen at the other regiment is the singer, would you believe, James Blunt, ladies and gents. That's why he always shows up at those royal weddings. Very close friend of both Prince William and Prince Harry. So here we are getting your first visual, and we're going to head out the back towards Horse Guards Parade. I'll show you this incredible area. Now, just a brief mention while we're here, because it's quite important. If you look across the road, right by the sign Whitehall, you'll see a bust of King Charles I of England, the only British king in history to be executed. This is, in fact, where he was very publicly executed on the 30th of January in 1649. Also, the one place in London, ladies and gents, you can actually get a photograph beside soldiers of the Queen. So we're heading towards what's called Horse Guards Parade. Look at this stunning area. This area is known as Horse Guards Parade. Now, every day, the Horse Guards do change over in this immediate area, and that is the changing over of the Blues and Royals or the Lifeguard Regiments. Every single day, it takes place Monday to Saturday at 11 a.m. and on Sundays at 10 a.m. But if you join us on the Westminster Tour, ladies and gents, we'll definitely get an amazing visual on their way to their guard change. Now you may know this, there's St. James's Park. So what we've actually done is we have come full circle around and up Whitehall and straight back down here again. Now this area is Horse Guards Parade. This is the Admiralty, the Chief Officers of the Navy here in Great Britain. Very famous man that worked in there actually, where we believe he got much of his influence for his much loved novels to come, was in fact the chap called Sir Ian Fleming which you'll all know was the author of James Bond. Uh, but did you know he was also the author of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, ladies and gents? It's one for your little pub quiz trivia. Uh, right behind you here, this incredible building were the former offices of the Duke of Wellington, the famous victor over Napoleon. Now it's home to the horse guards and it's where they're stationed. Uh, has stables on the left-hand side and an incredible museum Horse Guards Parade Museum. Now, this area was also used by Henry VIII for games. He used to joust here. It's where the Trooping of the Colour takes place once a year. And the Trooping of the Colour is a celebration of the Queen's birthday. The Queen has two birthdays. Her official birthday is April 21st. However, her celebration usually takes place, I believe it's the last Saturday in June, or the third Saturday in June. And it's an incredible ceremony because the entire royal family will head down the mall in the royal carriages. So if you're fortunate enough to be here for the Trooping the Colour, we will be bringing you to see the royal family. So it's an incredible day down here and a celebration of the Queen's birthday. This is also in 2012 where the beach volleyball event 
in the London Olympic Games took place and they set up for the beach volleyball here. Also a little bit of trivia, London is the only city in the world to have hosted the Olympic Games three times, 1908, 1948 and 2012. Very busy summer in London 2012 because that also coincided with the Diamond Jubilee of the Queen, 60 years on the throne. Now, this is an original World War II bunker, folks. This is called the Citadel. Also, quite interestingly, apparently, again, top secret laboratories underground here. So not an awful lot we know about it, but apparently it's also one of the only things not visible on Google Maps. It's always a little bit of a conspiracy theory going on. Now, the grand old Duke of York, who had 10,000 men, his statue adorning the Mall, and this area here, he was one of the sons of King George III of England. His brother was George IV, and he had another brother, William IV, also kings of England. But we're gonna see more statues of George IV in just a moment. Let's head in to Trafalgar Square. So we're gonna make our way towards Trafalgar Square, um, probably one of the most recognizable parts of London. But as we're doing so, I just wanna draw your attention to Admiralty Arch. This stunning building uh, is the royal entrance to the Mall, and it leads all the way up to Buckingham Palace. Now, you'll see in the center, regretfully, there's a lot of construction going on, but that's just part of life in London. But the central arch, <laughs> right here in the middle is the exclusive entrance of the royal family and it plays a huge role in royal ceremonies. Uh, this is where the um, carriages will head through uh, down to the state opening of parliament, beautiful ceremonial affair. It's where the royal carriages will head through also in the event of a wedding at Westminster Abbey. The only time the public is permitted to use that central entrance is during the London Marathon, or for very special occasions like uh, the Olympic Games. Now, it was erected by Edward VII, not the most popular king of Britain. He was the eldest son of Queen Victoria. Now, Queen Victoria, obviously very popular, but Edward VII had the rather unfortunate nickname of Dirty Bertie. So, to gain himself some sort of favor with the British public, he erected this memorial to commemorate his mother most recently been sold in 2012 for an estimated 60 million pounds. I believe um, there's in a development phase stage by the Waldorf Astoria to open up a hotel. And what an incredible visual you will get of possibly one of the most recognizable squares in the world. Coming up straight ahead of you, Trafalgar Square. Getting its name, from the famous Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. And the victor of the Battle of Trafalgar, you're about to see in just a moment, Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson. And this, ladies and gents, is the famous Nelson's Column. We're just gonna cross over so we can get a better view inside the square. So, Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson and Nelson's Collier. Um, there was a famous plot by the Nazis, actually, in World War II. Uh, they were so confident in their victory over Britain, uh, they were going to remove the Collier and put it in Berlin. However, Nelson himself, of course, that worked out a lot differently, more differently in World War II. Uh, Nelson, the famous victor over Napoleon, um, he famously lost his life in the Battle of Trafalgar. He was killed by sniper fire in the first 20 minutes of action. Now, ordinarily, these admirals would be buried at sea, but Nelson was such a highly decorated officer, they wanted to return his body back to the UK and have a state funeral for him in St. Paul's Cathedral. So they decided that they would pickle his body in a vat of brandy for a three-week journey from the south coast of Spain. Of course, that didn't work out to be the best of ideas, as you can imagine, because by the time that brandy returned, it had seriously depleted, and that's because, quite literally, the soldiers on board had decided, you guessed it, we're gonna have one last drink with the Admiral, ladies and gents. 
Now this is Trafalgar Square, ladies and gentlemen, but we are going to be doing a video, a more in-depth video on Trafalgar Square. So please like and subscribe um, underneath the comments below. If you have any questions or comments as well, you can do so. So this is where we conclude our Westminster tour ordinarily. It would usually take about two hours. That's just a sneak peek of what's to come. But more importantly, I want to thank you most sincerely for joining me today. Again, please like and subscribe our videos. It's amazing what we can show you in London virtually at the moment. And if you have enjoyed the tour, my name is Sinead. And if you haven't enjoyed the tour, my name is Jose. I want to thank my cameraman, Aaron, most sincerely for helping us today. And I hope to see you all very soon. If you are enjoyed the tour, ladies and gents, or you have enjoyed the tour, I'm more than happy for you to buy me a coffee. You'll see my PayPal link below. Thanks again, folks. And we'll see you for the next tour coming up very soon.